Hey there everyone, thanks for tuning in again. It's Lakazi. Here we have a game between two Protoss players. Uh, Eldwin in the top left hand corner is the red Protoss. He picked Protoss. And down here in the bottom right hand corner we have Lokazi, me, who has random to Protoss. Um, this map is Closed Ravine. It's one of the bigger 1v1 maps. It can also serve as a 2v2 map. Um, it's fairly fairly nice size map. Uh, I believe it's 128 by 128, something like that. Um, it's a, this game is a game in a series of King of the Hill games between played between a few friends. And Eldwin always plays uh, Protoss. He's in, I believe, the 800s in one of his Diamond Leagues for 1v1. And Lokazi always random, so I always random. Uh, I think it kind of mixes up the game, makes it a little bit more fun. Plus, uh, I'm not really sure who I'm best with. My win-loss ratio is probably best with Protoss, but I, I, I love playing Zerg. I, I can't really get over that, but... I just I just have to random. It's the most fun that way. All right, here we have Elwin out scouting, trying to find the other player here. Um, important to scout early on this map as it's such a large map, but Lokazi not scouting here as keeping his race hidden for as long as possible also helps um, kind of you know keep it a secret, keep him guessing, not knowing what the other player's build order is, not knowing what may be coming out, and kind of uh, forcing him into kind of go into a strategy that prevents any type of early push by any race instead of an early push by one race. Um, so kind of pushing him into stalkers in case it's Terran Reaper harass or well if he was playing a Zerg he would probably go for mostly Zealots as they counter Zergling so well. So it's always best to kind of keep it keep it random and he knows that uh, the other player will scout him eventually and then he'll know um, at least based on the time that it took to get here he can, he can have a good guess of where he came from. So he knows it probably took he probably sent out a scout at the nine pylon, so it's probably one of the two further away locations, not the bottom left or the top right. Probably the top left, um, but he's not sure. So he's sending out his probe now and uh, trying to go gather some information. Now we have a standard, pretty standard build here. Um, we have the both players are at probes at 16 here, both going for a fairly strong economy. The first gateway is up on each side of the map here. And uh, Lokazi is still scouting out, trying to find where the other player is. He checks the top right first, and then he's probably going to head up to the top left. Uh, building the first Zealot down here. No Zealots coming out up here. Cybernetics Core is down for both of them, about the same distance. And both still uh, chrono boosting and pumping out more probes. We have uh, the second pylon going down and the second gas up here at Eldwin's base. Down here at Lokazi's, he's still only at uh, one assimilator and hasn't gone for a second gateway or anything. Both of them look like they're going to tech just a little bit, um, probably get up to Robo Bays before their pushes. Um, just based on the size of the map, pushing before then could spell pretty big disaster for either player. As, as you travel across the map, the other player is obviously going to build up their army more. So by the time you get there, any numerical advantage you have by going for some type of faster build will be lost. So it's uh, pretty important to to tech up in big maps like this. Um, second gateway is down for Eldwin. He does have a second gas, but he doesn't have anything on it yet. Because he's thrown up his second gateway, but hasn't um, finished, or it looks like he was boosting the first time for warp gate there. A stalker coming out to kite any type of um, early zealot aggression out of Eldwin. Eldwin also researching his warp gates. Uh, both players about equal in probes, though no, no, nothing has been thrown onto that second assimilator for Eldwin yet. Because he's thrown up his second assimilator and has uh, one probe going to it. The mineral count is higher in Eldwin's flavor as he's had one more probe for a little while longer and hasn't built as many units. He has his uh, zealot there blocking with the classic Protoss gate we have going here with one gateway, one cybernetic score, and a pylon powering them. Sometimes built with two gates, usually built with a cybernetic score, as most Protoss players will, will tech fairly, generally off the bat, don't go for a two gate, um, especially on a big map like this. Now, Eldwin is throwing um, proxy pylons up at one of the Zelnaga towers, and it looks like he's going to have that probe chill there at the second Zelnaga tower, the one closest to Lokazi's base, so you can see anything kind of coming out of there. Kazi building mostly stalkers so far, it looks like. Um, as the only unit he did see at the 
opposing player's base was one zealot, so that's really all he has to go off of when building his army right now. Warp gate research almost done for Lokazi, probably almost done up here too. Yeah, a few seconds behind. Two more gateways going up, and uh, a pylon here at Elbowin's base, so it looks like he's going for a four gate build. Lokazi's thrown up two gates and is now putting out a robo bay, so he's going for a two or three gate robo. Um, really strong against other protest players. Oh, looks like he's going for a two robo. Uh, probably going to be pumping out those immortals to take down stalkers, and as long as he has enough zealots to cover the Elbowin zealots, he should be able to easily win whatever first confrontation they have if they both go for early aggression pushes. Uh, the reason this is is because Immortals are a hard counter to Stalkers, while the Zeals will cancel each other out, and Stalkers versus Immortals are just going to lose um, in pretty much any Protoss versus Protoss matchup. Um, looks like the first Robotics Bay has finished, and the first Robo is going out, the Robotics Facility, and the second Robo Facility is almost done. Elwin starting to mass up his forces here with his 4-gate. He has uh, 5 Stalkers, 1 Sentry, and 1 Zealot. While Lokazi has three stalkers, a sentry, and two zealots. He's a little, he's a little under right now, but no aggression out of Elbowin. He looks like he's going to wait and build probably one, if not two more, cycles of his warp gate construction. Uh, taking out the destructible rocks here for the easily, more easily defended expansion. And the first immortal is done. And the second one's cooking right now. Hasn't started up a third one yet. He's a little short on gas. Another pylon going up in Elbowin's base. He's not taking out his destructible rocks. Looks like he's just kind of uh, has it lined up there to defend his entrance. And he's thrown out another round of warp gates, it looks like. And it looks like he threw up more zeals. And it looks like he's throwing up more zeals again. And one stalker. Lokazi, meanwhile, throwing up some pylons around his base, has destroyed that destructible rock, might be expanding there soon. He definitely has the minerals too, and probably wants to to try and get uh, more gas for pumping out those immortals. Lokazi throwing his probe across the map, trying to see if he can get some scout off on what the composition of uh, Elbin's army here is. If he sees other immortals, he knows that he should pack some more zealots in there. If he sees lots of stalkers, which he's going to, He's going to know that he made the right choice in going for those immortals as long as he can he can match or beat the zeal count there. Now he does see that there was four gateways up, so he knows he's going for a very strong four gate build. Um, so he knows there's probably not a robo bay up yet. And there's a forge, looks like he's gonna be going for upgrades. And he's just gonna gather as much scouting information as he can. He doesn't see the army, so he either thinks it's out or oh no, then he runs into it. To do, he sneaks by. Elwin doesn't notice or doesn't care that the probe is scouting his base. Two more immortals coming up, putting us to four immortals down here at Lokazi's base. So the count is between stalkers and immortals equal uh, between the two. Um, looks like Elwin has far more sentries and zeals. And looks like we're going to have some type of confrontation as both players are moving across the map. Stalkers out in front, obviously, as they are much quicker but gathering it up in there in the middle and getting ready to push. He does have the proxy pal on there, so easily reinforceable, especially as he's the four gate. And the battle starts up. The first stalker death going to Lokazi here. And these immortals move up into their positions and start doing their work. Zeals of uh, Elbin there did kind of get trapped and didn't get to the front of the fight quite fast enough probably for his liking. Throws down a sentry, uh, force field there out of one of his sentries. Not really sure what he's going to block there. Lokazi losing two of his immortals and Owen losing pretty much his entire army. Lokazi knows he's going to push on this one. He's already built a proxy pylon up here and is going to push into the base now with his army, which uh, even with another round, and there it is, as you see the count going up, even with another round, still is going to outnumber uh, Owen's army here. And he has thrown up his expansion and is building more immortals to send across the map. Stalker's moving in the back here, trying to get some harass, trying to lure the army away from the main gate, looks like, before Lokazi goes in. Which works. Looks like he pulls, he sp effectively splits the army with just the harassment of those two. And here he starts to push into Owen's base. Another round of warp gate coming out here. But through that bottleneck, Lokazi's going to be able to just block right there. It's a good call not to push into the base right now, 
as you can take out all these warp gates and keep these zeals which require melee range from being able to get in and really put the pressure on these immortals they're just throwing out all that damage he's disabled the power to all of the warp gates probably should have gone for more than one pylon powering those warp gates there and is uh, losing his front line of zeals there but has pushed in and is now taking out those remaining zeals and there's no power to those warp gates so he's going to try and kite him back and probably try and move a Oh, looks like he's throwing the whole army at it. Um, Mikazi, meanwhile, has brought up another immortal and is still producing back at his base. And looks like he's going to take out all the production, well, pretty much all the production, down to 17 probes on L1 side. And this is probably just going to be the good game right here. Yeah, there's the call. And uh, there we have a Protoss versus Protoss game where the um, one Protoss went for two gate, two robo. A strong build against a another Protoss, especially with an early push, as mortals are just so powerful. Even um, as long as they can keep the zeals off of them, they they just rip through the opposing Protoss player's army. Um, pushed at an advantageous time, the probably should have pushed a little bit harder, so the second round of uh, of uh, the four gateways didn't get the z the zeals out, but did push strong. Did get a proxy pylon in the other player's base to try and reinforce as much as possible and uh, did get some good scouting off and saw what the opposing player's army was made out of. Did expand, did have a backup plan for when that push failed, and that was the game uh, with that the big immortal push uh, really won it for him. Thanks for tuning in.